okay. Welcome, Wargamers. This is Doug with 2 Plus Stuff, and today we're talking about Gordrak, the Fist of Gork. Now, typically when I do these videos, I always show just kind of generic art from the battle tomes as I kind of talk about different factions and things like that. But today I want to do something special. I was sent a bunch of pictures from a viewer named Ben Howard, who won a local painting contest at his store for his Iron Jaws, and I thought I'd go ahead and use those in this video. So Ben, congrats. Jumping into Gordrak's origin story, it all starts during the Age of Chaos. As the Chaos Gods were kind of taking over different parts of the mortal realms, they were really subjugating everything around them. Again, that's what Chaos Gods want to do. They want control over everything. And this means taking over the wildlife and destruction armies that we know of. So Oryx were being either killed or enslaved, used for labor, things like that. Lands were being tamed. And upon realizing that his lands were being tamed, the Oryx god Gork became outraged and decided to take action. What he did was he found the biggest Chaos Dreadhold fort with all the optional pieces that you could possibly buy from Games Workshop just stacked to the max, and he took his continent-sized fist, which is how it's described in the Iron Jaws Battle Tome, and punched it. And what this looked like was a giant wah energy tower coming from the heavens and just obliterating this fortification. Now, if you missed my video on the wall, I'll go ahead and link it up here, but this must have been like a nuclear bomb going off, just decimated this fort in a single punch. And as the ash kind of dissipated and everything kind of settled down, when it was all said and done, there was exactly one auric standing where this dreadful fort used to be, and that was Gordrak. Now, it's said in the battle tome, this story might not be true, but it is widely believed by the Iron Jaws, which is basically good enough, for them anyway. Gordrak is noted for being the most vicious and cunning of his kind, and he's more than just a warrior, and that's important to put out there. He gets his title from being a true leader, because collaboration is a rare skill for an orc. He manages hundreds of mega bosses. If you read the Iron Jaws Battle Tome, these are all individual warbands and armies of orcs kind of going around pillaging, but they all pay homage to Gordrak. They're in all the different realms, they're everywhere, but they all owe allegiance to him. So this is a big management role, if you will. He has a small group of weird nod shamans and things like that, and his generals that kind of act as his advisory board, if you will. But ultimately, to lead, feed, and direct as many oryx as he does makes him uniquely dangerous in the mortal realms. And the reason for that is, as a destruction army, what destruction really is, is freedom. And like, absolute, wild, unabashed freedom. Because of that, he can't be bargained with. You can't reason with him because he doesn't want anything from you. He's not building a society where we can exchange resources and work together to fend off the bad guys. Nothing like that. In fact, one of the first stories we have with Gordrak in it is when a Stormcast Eternal, I believe it's a prosecutor, lands down in front of him, kneels before him and says, basically, hey, Sigmar's putting the Pantheon back together. We'd love to have you on board. Will you fight with us? To which Gorjak responds by taking his axe and cutting the dude in half in one blow. Because there's nothing to be gained by joining with order. But the only thing they want is to fight and be free. So they have everything to gain by resisting them. And so that's Gorjak kind of as a leader, but when he personally goes to war, he wields two axes. One's called Smasha, one's called Cunnan. And the story goes that this used to be the weapon that Gorka Morka wielded. Once upon a time, these two axes were actually one. It was one double-sided mega axe that he used. And then when Gorka Morka, who sometimes splits to become Gork and Mork, decided to split at that point in time, they split the axe as well. But each of them bestowed this as a gift to Gordrak. So he wields an axe of Gork and an axe of Mork, basically. His mount is actually named. His name is Big Teeth, and he is a colossal maw crusher. Story goes that nobody could figure out how to capture and tame this particular maw crusher as in the wild just absolutely being ballistic, killing dozens and dozens of orcs and iron jaws. And so Gordrag walks up, stares at him straight in the eye, and the two scream at each other. And they bellow so loudly that it caused an avalanche. And the avalanche comes and rolls over both of them. They're both pinned down. Gordrag's able to kind of climb out of the rubble because he's probably because he's smaller. Walks over to where Big Teeth is, puts a mask on him, which is why his uh, face is covered in the model, and basically breaks him as a mount, and that's what he uses to ride into battle now. And when we're talking about Gordrak, it, it's more than just him being a great warrior and how great Gordrak is. He's the mega boss of mega bosses, and those things are true. He's incredible. But there's kind of a bigger threat going on. 
In one sense, Archeon has a problem. Archeon can only be in one place at one time. He is a finite being, and so is Goydrak. The difference is, is that with Chaos, everyone's out for themselves, and they get kind of snapped into alliance when Archeon's around. But with Oryx, these guys are dedicated to Goydrak in a different way. They think he is the bringer. They think he is the bringer of the greatest wall that will ever wash upon the mortal realms. So they're like, they're not just soldiers in his army. They're devoted to him. And when he's around, the Oryx threat grows exponentially. Archeon has to go to a place to subjugate it, and then they'll they'll follow him if he makes them, or he'll just wipe them out. But Gordrak is the banner that rallies the forces of destruction. Even the Beast Claw Raiders, we talked talked about that. And even the Beast Claw Raiders that we talked about in their lore video, they do pay homage to Gordrak. They see there's something special about this guy. Same thing with the Bone Splitters. He really stirs the pot. Wherever he goes, the forces of destruction just boom. Why? Because he is this kind of wild and untamed element of the realms made manifest. Every other faction wants control or dominion. Even order. They want rules. They want hierarchy. They want everyone to be safe. They want everyone to be in civilization. And Chaos obviously wants to just have dominion over everything, be controlling it. And destruction as a whole. But also Gordrak represent that lack of control. You can't contain this. And as such, he is inherently against every other faction, and he's phenomenal at it. So what makes Gordrak so incredible? Just kind of stepping back from the actual lore, talking about some kind of thoughts that run through my mind as I talk about him. I love the non-god characters that shape events. Like Marathi and him and Archeon, they're not gods themselves, but they are at that kind of like right below that level of tier of power. Right? At the end of the day, he's just an orc. He's big and he's strong, but he's one dude. But when you're that one dude who wields a continent-sized army, you can get things done. Like I mentioned Marathi, they're not gods, but they definitely swing at that level in terms of fighting prowess and power and how they can manipulate the realms around them. They can really move and drive events in the mortal realms. And I love the fact that I find myself rooting for him. Because fundamentally, when we talk about destruction, okay, here's the fundamental question. Who deserves to rule the mortal realms? And Gordrak's answer is nobody. You don't deserve to make cities. You don't deserve to rule our people, enslave them, nothing like that. Everyone gets to be wild and free and be who, whatever, whatever they want to be. But you can't contain this thing. It's a living, thriving energy, and I absolutely think that's incredible, right? Who else exemplifies free spirit? Nobody. There's no other hero that we have right now in the new lore that represents freedom unchained like he does. And with that, he's big, he's bad, he's wild, and even though he's not a god, he poses a critical threat to everything the gods are trying to do. And they, at some point, have to address him. And for being the mouse who roared, he does a heck of a job stomping through the mortal realms. So friends, those are my thoughts on Gordrak, the Fist of Gork, an incredible model. Thank you, Ben Howard, for these pictures. They're really cool. And I look forward to seeing you in my next Age of Sigmar lore video. If you have a question you like answered, go ahead, click subscribe, leave it in the comments down below. I'm taking some time off of books specifically to go back and just really dive into your guys' questions. So keep them coming, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and happy wargaming. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want to introduce you to some awesome folks. These are my patrons over on Patreon, and they make this show possible by their direct support of me to buy battle tomes and black library books and all the material I need and the hardware support that I need to make this stuff possible. And if you'd like to join them, go ahead and click over to the Patreon page, to the link in the description down below, and you'll be introduced to a really awesome community of people talking about the hobby, sharing what they're painting. Uh, I invite them uh, to be part of polls to decide what content comes next. I raffle off every battle tome that I review, and we're having some great fun and discussions over there. So go ahead and check it out. Now, if you can't support in that way, that's completely fine. I'm just so glad that you watched this video here today. And if you have an Age of Sigmar lore question, go ahead and click subscribe and leave it in the comments down below. I read every single question and comment. I respond to as many as I possibly can, but I use them all as inspiration for future videos. So go ahead and do that now. And I look forward to seeing you guys on my next Age of Sigmar lore video. Thank you so much for watching, and happy wargaming.